I've built my own music production computer that is going to double as a video editing machine for my YouTube videos. PCs can be as reliable as Macs if you choose the right components, so that is what this video is all about. With computers you have to glue all the components together, so the processor, the memory, the graphic card, and in computer world you do that with, with a motherboard. And the motherboard is the plate on the back of the computer, and those are all the electronics on it with the VGA card, the processor, the memory, etc. That's all on the motherboard. I chose an ASUS motherboard. Why, why did they say ASUS? Why it's not ASUS? Because you also say anus. Well, okay. Because Asus, Asus, Anus, A, they really make solid motherboards, especially the TUF series, the TUF series are really quality motherboards. This motherboard has a USB-C connection for, for example, an audio interface. This motherboard has also eight memory expansion slots. Those are over here and those are quad channel memory slots. Most motherboards nowadays have dual channel memory. Uh, this motherboard has quad channel memory. That means that I have more speed of my memory if I combine four memory modules modules together and in this case I've placed four memory modules of 8 gigabytes so that makes a total of 32 gigabytes. If you choose a motherboard make sure it has the same socket as your CPU, you pros, your processor. The most i5, i7 processors and some i9 processors have socket 1200. In this case I have an i9 processor in my machine and this processor had socket 12, uh, 2066. Music production relies heavily on the CPU because it has to do a lot of complicated mathematical calculations. The same for video editing by the way, but it leans more on the CPU than video editing because uh, when it can't do that calculation within a certain time frame, the same as with video editing, then it will miss that time frame. And for video editing, you simply just skip a frame. That is not a big deal. But for music production, it will skip a frame and you hear a crackle in your audio. Besides that that is incredibly annoying, you can't focus on your music and you don't want to render out your MIDI every single time you make a change in your MIDI. I chose an i9 processor with 10 course that may be an overkill for music production but it is not for video editing. Music production generally won't take advantage of more than eight cores. A i7 processor with four to six or eight cores is just fine for the job. Yes, single core speed is important for music production because a lot of audio is handled sequentially in a door but it is not as important as many music producers would like you to believe because there is a trade-off between uh, multi-core speed, so more cores and single core speed. Intel or AMD, I chose Intel because of reliability. More info about AMD versus Intel, you can find in my video about AMD versus Intel. More information about processors, you can find in my processor video. The links to both of those videos are in the description. The CPU is only uh, this large and about this high, uh, but it is hidden behind this a ridiculously large cooler just to cool things properly. I chose a Cooler Master cooler, uh, of course with RGB. Uh, something doesn't sit right with me when it comes to water cooling. Yeah, water and expensive electronics. Yeah. If you are also into video editing and streaming, you should definitely check out my video about the best computer for YouTube. I did on my YouTube advice channel. The link to the channel and that video are in the description below. The other part that is extremely important for music production is the RAM, the read, the <laughs> random access memory. I chose 32 gigabytes just to be a little bit future proof but you could get away with 16 gigabytes or even 8 if you can expand later. You use a lot of RAM with sample based instruments like native plugins, uh, native instrument plugins for example but uh, if you use a lot of synthesizers that yeah that memory requirement is a little bit lower. Most motherboards nowadays have dual channel memory that means that if you combine two memory modules of the same speed and the same size that you can have a more uh, memory with more speed. This motherboard supports quad channel memory that means if you combine four modules then you can have more speed. I have 32 gigabytes 
divide it over four memory slots, that means that those memory modules are eight gigabyte each. This motherboard had eight memory expansion slots. Right now I have four memory slots occupied, so I can expand later. The total amount of memory in this computer is 128 gigabytes. The memory modules are clocked at 2666 megahertz. There are faster modules on the market, but those are overclocked memory modules. You don't want to overclock because of stability reasons. I have two storage solutions in my computer. The first one is in the form of an NVMe SSD that is on the motherboard. It's an M.2 SSD. Under here, under this PSU shroud, is a traditional spinning bladder drive. The advantage of SSDs is that they are extremely fast. So if you install Windows on them, it is, well, not an instant boot, but a couple of seconds. But they are not as reliable as traditional spinning bladder drives. So for my data, I use a traditional spinning bladder drive, but they are slower. And for Windows, I use my NVMe SSD. SSDs have the tendency to die on you from one minute to the next. And when it comes to sp traditional spinning bladder drives, they die, but they give you some audible clues. Hey, copy data, copy data. And in the long run, traditional hard disk, uh, yeah, just a little bit more reliable than SSDs. And traditional hard drives are a little bit cheaper per gigabyte to store than an SSD. If I need to reinstall Windows once a year, I just can do a format C and don't have to worry about all my data because my data is on my other drive. When it comes to storage, I would say choose at least one terabyte, preferably even two. I chose uh, 256 gigabytes over here in my NVMe SSD for Windows and three or four, no, I have three terabytes in here for my spinning bladder drive. Some plugins like uh, some native instruments plugins, if you want to install the full plugin, you have to have one terabyte of free space. And uh, next to that, you have to have Windows and all your data also on your drive. So you need a big storage drive. A graphics card doesn't matter that much for music production, but you need to have a graphics card in your computer, otherwise you can't connect your monitor. My graphics card is right here, but it is here for my video editing. Depending on your video card and your processor, you need to have a beefy power supply in your computer, especially if you do video editing and gaming. I have a 600 watt power supply in this computer that's a temporary power supply, so that will work for music production. The processor sucks also a lot of power, so uh, bear in mind, 400 watts or so is too low. Then the case, yeah, I have to give that one to the Apple fanboys. Um, compared to Apple, these cases are absolute turds and one is <laughs> worse than the other. I chose a case that is a little bit presentable. It has a glass panel on the front and a glass panel on the side over here. If I have problems with overheating, I can also place two fans over here on the top of the case. I can remove this mesh thingy if I want to. And over here on the back side, if I remove this thing for the Wi-Fi, uh, I can also place a, a extra fan over here. And the reason why I chose this case is because this has a glass front panel. The airflow uh, is get sucked in over here, but under a heavy workload, the computer might be a little bit too hot and you can remove this glass panel and then the airflow through the computer is a lot better. Yes, you also need a monitor. I had an old monitor lying around. For the time being, it's okay. But if you buy a new one, I would say look for a widescreen monitor so you can see more of your timeline. Okay, let's do some tests. I have here a ridiculous test project. Over here, I have about 130. 30 something, no, 125 MIDI tracks. Those are all loaded with serum and it handles that just barely. And that's a huge difference between my old computer that had about three, four, sometimes five tracks of serum that it could handle. That was my old Mac of 10 years ago. If I now add three tracks or so, then it will chuck. Yeah, now it starts to chuck, but nevertheless, impressive. 
the components that I used in this build are in the description below, including the links to Amazon. And what is the best laptop for music production? Check out this video right here. If you are a YouTube creator or you want to start a YouTube channel, you should definitely check out my YouTube advice channel. The link to that channel is over here.